church and happy mother's day to all of you that's joining us online welcome to church and as we start this service i encourage you to find a good spot in your home where you and your family can comfortably gather and as we start our worship with songs i challenge you to engage in worship by singing by the clapping and the raising of your hands let us participate as we honor god today also, please prepare your Bibles as we will be hearing from the Word of God to be delivered later on in the service. So let's praise God and let's honor Him for His goodness today.
Good day, church. As we observe the regulations set forth by our local, local government during this time out weekend, we hope that all of you are safe in the comfort of your homes. But we still thank the Lord because of technology. We know that, and also that we know that the church isn't limited to the four corners of this sanctuary, but wherever His people can gather together. He has taken the church to the very foundational institution, which is the family. And we are very grateful for that. So today, as we start this online service, I hope that all of you are seated comfortably in your homes together with your families. And I challenge every single one of you watching today to participate as we give praise to God through the singing of songs. Sing along with us, clap your hands, lift them high. Let's use our bodies to express our gratitude towards our living God. Amen. And later on in the service, please prepare your Bibles and your hearts as we receive words of revelation to be delivered by our pastor. If you have your Bibles with you, kindly open them to Psalm 27 verses 1 to 6. And reading from the NASB, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? When evildoers came upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war arise against me, in spite of this, I shall be confident. One thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in His temple. For in the day of trouble, He will conceal me in His tabernacle. In the secret place of His tent, He will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock, and now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Today we look unto our God who is able to deliver, to restore, and to be the firm foundation of our lives. Even if the world is in chaos, we can still be confident in the goodness of our God. Today, we will seek nothing else but His presence. And we will offer the best of our praises no matter where we are physically today. As what we have always said and believed in, nothing can ever hinder us or stop us from giving praise to our God because we know that He deserves it. So together in your homes, join us and let us lift up the most beautiful name, the most powerful name, and that is the most precious name, Jesus Christ. There is no other name that is above His name. And we believe that His name is worthy to be lifted up, worthy to be glorified, worthy to be exalted above every circumstance, above every trial, above every blessing. His name is worthy to be lifted up. That He alone deserves our highest praise. He alone deserves all the glory, all the adoration that we could ever give. Even in our lack, even in our need, you will continue to give praise to our God because He has been good. He has been faithful to us. And so church, in your homes, lift up your voices. Sing a new song to our God today. Lift high the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. Oh God, we exalt you today. We give you glory for who you are in our lives, God, and for what you have done. You have been faithful, you have been true, you have been awesome and mighty to save. You have been our deliverer, oh God. And today our hearts are filled with so much thanks, so much gratitude, Lord, towards everything that you have done for us, oh God. So would you fill up our homes, fill up, Lord God, our places today. Let it be filled with praise, let it be filled with your presence, because it is you that we see. It is you that we long for today, oh God. Oh, we lift high the name of Jesus. We lift high the name of Jesus. The name above every name. Oh, 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 o
that they are all power but yours, oh God. Today, Lord God, we are so grateful to have known this beautiful name. Oh God, we give you praise. With the best of our abilities, Lord God, we give you praise today. We are so thankful, Lord. Thankful for sustaining us, for providing for us, oh God. And for everything that you have done, it is just but right, oh God, that we give you back all the glory, all the honor, the thanksgiving that is due your name. And today, Lord God, we proclaim that your presence is overflowing in our homes right this very moment, oh God. Let your people encounter you today. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus.
is higher than you. So God, we pray today, let your presence fall in our homes, wherever we are, oh God. It is you that we seek, that we long for. We long to be where you are, God, to dwell in your house, to gaze upon your beauty, your majesty, to stand in awe of you, Lord. Come and meet us, oh God, meet us today. Hallelujah.
there is fullness of joy in your presence your love overflows your grace abounds right here this very moment in your presence it is all that we seek and we choose to dwell in your presence the rest of our lives oh God father would you open up our hearts today let your love let your goodness overflow today father would you open up our minds, let our hearts be fertile ground, Lord, to receive a word of revelation from you. God, let your word allow us to transform and change our lives. Give us a new perspective in life. Because right now, this very moment when the world is in chaos, it is you alone that is the rock of our salvation, our firm foundation, the faith, Lord God, our hope. We all put it on you, Jesus. So, Lord, we thank you today for bringing your presence to our homes. Wherever we are, we thank you, oh God. We give you back all the glory, all the honor, the adoration that you alone deserve. And all your people will say a mighty amen and amen. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord. Good day, church. I hope you're all okay in this time of... Uh pandemic especially right now that we have our time out weekend um, we are just in our homes and so we have this online service 
So I'll get straight to the word, okay? Um, today we will be talking about 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 to 10. And the title of our message is, When the Going Gets Tough. Let's read in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 to 10. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power of God may be of God and not of us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today and this opportunity to hear your word even in this time out week. And we pray that you would speak to each and every one of us. Let there be a revelation that will be received today. May you cover your messenger today, O Lord, with your most precious blood. And as he speaks, may your words be spoken and not his. May you speak to all of us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Earthen vessels or clay were containers created by skilled potters who took raw clay and shaped and molded it as they desired, and then baked the clay until it was hard. They then painted, glazed, or decorated the jars for whatever purpose they had in mind. In ancient times, sacred scrolls or valuable documents were rolled up and placed inside a jar of clay and then hidden for safekeeping. Something as valuable as the Dead Sea Scrolls were kept in such jars of clay. Pottery jars could be beautiful or purely functional, but they had one thing in common, for sure. All of them are breakable. Contents could not be forever housed in the jars of clay. Clay jars were just temporary holding places. Paul wrote 2 Corinthians at a very vulnerable time in his life. He had learned that the church at Corinth was struggling and he sought to take action to preserve the unity of the local body of believers. The central theme of 2 Corinthians is the relationship between suffering and the power of the Spirit in Paul's apostolic life, ministry, and message. Paul's opponents had questioned his motives and his personal courage. They argued that he had suffered too much to be a Spirit-filled apostle of the risen Christ. But Paul argues that his suffering is the means God uses to reveal his glory. That can be found in chapter 1, verses 3 to 4, verse 11 and 20 in 2 Corinthians. The Corinthians were going through hard times as they were facing division in the church. False preachers and sins undealt with, yet Paul would encourage them by telling them that they have treasures in jars of clay. Paul would later hear how the Corinthians got better and turned away from their sin after reading this letter. But at the same time, or but at the time when hard times were pressing for them, to hear Paul calling them jars of clay might have hurt their pride. Being compared to something as breakable as jars of clay might not be what the Corinthians wanted to hear about themselves during hard times. And why did Paul have to tell them this? I'll give you an example. A small amount of water is added to an aluminum can or soda can and brought to boiling on a hot plate or with a Bunsen burner would uh, make a good experiment, right? The water gas molecules will occupy all the space inside the can since the air molecules will be pushed out. The hot gas molecules are the same pressure as the air outside of the can. And when the can is placed in cold water, upside down, the hot gas water molecules are cooled very rapidly. And because of this, some of the gas molecules are condensed back to liquid water, so there are less molecules of water in the gas phase inside the can, because they will be converted. The cold water will also cool any remaining gas molecules, decreasing their kinetic energy, so less movement inside the can, less pressure, and therefore, this decreases the number of collisions within the walls of the can, hence decreasing the pressure inside the can. And since the air pressure outside the can is stronger than inside the can, it causes the can to collapse. 
But what if the pressure inside the can is stronger than the pressure outside of it? Would the can still collapse? No way. Instead, the can would remain intact through whatever pressure changes outside the can as long as what's inside the can is stronger than what's outside. What Paul meant to say is that as the Corinthians were being hard-pressed, perplexed, persecuted, and struck down by the challenges they faced, they weren't crushed in despair, forsaken, destroyed, because there is a greater inner pressure that hinders the highly breakable jar of clay to break. And that is the treasure in the earthen vessels. We are the earthen vessels, our temporary body and frailties that goes along in our humanity. The treasure is mentioned in the previous verse. God gave us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. That is in verse 6. And then this treasure can also be identified in verse 10. It says there, we always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Knowing Christ and what He has done for us does not only give us salvation, but it gives us a hope like no other for this earthly life. In this time of pandemic, other problems arise in politics, in churches, in the community, in our businesses and jobs, in schools, and even in our own families. We seem to be hard-pressed on every side, doubting, persecuted, and hit, strike by strike and blow by blow. Yet we have to be reminded by God's word today that we have a treasure, a treasure that makes us tough. We are still breakable, but with Christ as our treasure, we are unbreakable. And yet I say in Christ, and with Christ in us, we are tough. Come on, if you believe in that, say in the comment section, I am tough. Let us know that you're here. Say, I am tough. So, we will be going through three points today. When the going gets tough, the question is, how do the tough ones respond in times of hard-pressing crisis like what we have today? First of all, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. There's a popular saying which I think was first spoken by Joseph Kennedy, father of John F. Kennedy, which goes, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Later, singer Billy Ocean in the early 1980s popularized it further when he put it into a song. It ended up being becoming the theme song to a Michael Douglas movie called The Jewel of the Nile. A very familiar line, right? Um, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. There's some truth in that. Psalm 40 verse 2 says, He also brought me out of a horrible pit out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. Somebody that is tough. Somebody that gets going. So the Lord took us out of the miry clay before that happened. Now in the psalm, the miry clay is symbolic of the troubles that surround us and perhaps two of our own sins. Like Texas gumbo mud, they cling to us, weighing us down and hindering our free movement. They age us in the worst way, turning us from lightness and joy to sullen bitterness. Even out of the situation, the mud still clings, smearing itself on anything around that used to be clean, like in your shoes or in your pants. But the psalm doesn't stop with God drawing us out of the mire. He sets our feet on a rock and gives us a firm place to stand Therefore, we can go on as God has rescued us. In these times, many people have settled into spending a lot of time with mobile games, with K-drama, and many other activities to supposedly pass time. Yet these things might have already gotten a hold of some of us. We should not, only, we should not allow these unimportant things to hinder our devotion towards God. Right? I say that with love. We should not allow, especially right now, very rampant upon the young people, mobile games, gay drama, and I don't know what else, but you know it if you're going through it. And these things, you know, are not important, but they already take the place of God in your life, whether you realize that or not. And it's something that we must really take into not only consideration, but into action. He has taken us out of the miry clay 
and we must make sure that every mud has been wiped off. The presence of mud, though we have been, although it has been taken out of the mire, may cause us to slip from where God has set our feet. Right? When you have mud in your in your shoes, if it sticks there, it gets slippery. This will, you know, if we remove the, the mud, this will help us as we get going in the race of God that God has set us in because you won't slip. So no matter what pressures this pandemic will bring us, the stronger force inside, the treasure, keeps us from being crushed. We will be hard-pressed. Yes, we will be hard-pressed on every side, but we will not be crushed because of the treasure inside of us. So we will go on. First Peter 4 verse 19, So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful Creator and continue to do good. So that's the first. The tough, uh, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Let's go to the second point. When the going gets tough, the tough gets on their knees. And I will be basing this one in Nehemiah chapter 1. In Nehemiah chapter 1, after 70 years of Jewish exile in Babylon, a third of the survivors of the captivity were led back to Jerusalem, while Nehemiah, the cupbearer of King Artaxerxes, remained in Persia. Even though he remained there, he was concerned about the Jews in Jerusalem and inquired of their state. In Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 3 to 4, it says there, And they said to me, The survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down, and its gates are burned with fire. So it was, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Nehemiah's people were in the midst of trouble after coming home to a ruined Jerusalem. They did not have the resources to start building, and worse, they did not have a leader. But they had Nehemiah. He might have been away from them at the time, yet he was able to weep and mourn, fast and pray for his people. His city was in ruins, and his people were in great distress. Yet he was able to lead them later on towards a rebuild in Jerusalem. And it started out by prayer. This is a great example of leadership. Nehemiah showed toughness in tough times by kneeling before the Lord in prayer. Leadership and character that we need to have in troubling times like this. Through the pandemic, some of us have been exposed for hypocrisy when before this pandemic we were able to say, that we wanted to spend more time with God to read and to pray, but did not have enough time. Yet, when work, schools, and even churches have closed for the time being, men still could not give time to read and pray. If this is the kind of commitment we have, then we might not be strong enough to get back and rebuild like how Nehemiah and his people did. Seek the Lord even when there aren't enough gatherings. Seek the Lord even when no one reminds you. Seek Him now more than ever. Do not depend on programs. Who knows, maybe we might not have church programs until next year or even beyond that. We don't know. That's why it's important for us right now to be able to renew our commitment to the Lord even on our own. The true tough ones in tough times get on their knees to pray. Do not lose hope. No matter how dire the situation seems, we will be perplexed. We will get to doubt and faith may be down at times, but with Christ, hope will never run out. We will be perplexed, but we will never be in despair. We will never give up and quit. When we are down on our knees, our surrender is not unto our troubles, but unto the Lord. James chapter 5, verses 13 to 14 says, Is any of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. So, we're on to our third point, and that will be our last. So just to quickly review, the tough, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Second, when the going gets tough, the tough gets on their knees to pray. And number three, when the going gets tough, the tough gets tougher. One Saturday morning, a seven-year-old boy was playing in their front yard 
garden in the middle of flowers in bloom. He was trying to catch butterflies with his torn net. Suddenly, a, blue, a bee flew to his position, buzzing straightway, landing on the back of his palm. The busy bee stung him, and he lurched, crying to his mom in the kitchen who was cooking pancakes for a morning snack. The boy said, I hate bees, mommy. I hate bees. I wish God never created bees. He complained furiously. Mommy snobbishly threw a glimpse at her complaining son as she puts four pieces of those freshly cooked pancakes on a plate and pushed back the plate toward her son. He told his son, wait, don't eat it yet. Let me pour some of this pure honey that I just bought yesterday. The boy was feasting on the pancakes, dipping them in the honey that flowed on the plate. Mommy asked her son, how's the honey, Johnny? He said, really great, mom. Mommy lifted Johnny to her lap and started stroking his bee stung hand, looking eye to eye to her son with a smile. And she said, you know, Johnny, the bee that stung you is the same bee that gave us the honey. And the boy just looked at her mommy with a sheepish smile. Perspective is not what we see, but it is how we see. Sometimes toughness begins in the mind. That's why the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God, because the, that would be our offense against everything that the world or even the enemy throws at us. If we are so rooted in the Word of God, our perspective will be different from the rest of the world. Our greatest weakness lies in giving up. We could, so, we could be so battered up by everything that goes in our life, or whatever is to come, our body and emotions may begin to fail, but our mind should always be able to remind them what the Word of God says. We could never give up to this world, to our problem, to the tests, because in the end, if we give up to them, it is us who will lose. But if we were to give up and we want to win, we have to give up only before God. We surrender to God alone. Not giving up starts with the right perspective, the right mindset. James chapter 1 verse 2 to 5 says, Consider your pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. When we persevere in doing something, it is not because the situation has changed but because our determination has increased. The word perseverance that the Apostle James used in this passage is made up of two Greek words, hupo, meaning under or beneath, and meno, meaning remain or abide. That would give us an, an established notion that to persevere in our circumstances, it is to literally remain under the brunt of our situations and learn what God is teaching us experientially. For us to grow out of our situation, we must remain in our situation. Remain under the circumstance and abide in God's grace. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16-18 to 18 says, Therefore we do not lose heart even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us, a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are, are not seen are eternal. Warren Wiersbe said, It is necessary to understand that God is not going to replace suffering with glory. Rather, He will transform suffering into glory. In this world, we will be persecuted. It will hurt, it will embarrass, and it will shake the boat. But we will not be forsaken by God. He is with us throughout the way. We have this treasure, and that is Jesus Christ. Bad news just mount up on each other this year, doesn't it? We are living on such strange, strange times. As some of this bad news may not affect us directly, but some of them will, and some will even catch up on us sooner or later. 
blow by blow, hit by hit, it just doesn't stop. We will be struck down, but we will not be destroyed. As I close, having said all of this, we can indeed say that when the going gets tough, the tough gets going, the tough gets on their knees, and the tough gets tougher. This is all part of the master plan of God, that we may give Him the glory whatever comes our way. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have this treasure in jars of clay. We may be breakable, but because of what's inside, one could care less of what's outside. Jesus is our treasure, and He makes us tough throughout these times. The challenge is for all of us to ensure that we have this treasure. You might have drifted from the path God has set for you during this pandemic. Your commitment might have wavered, especially now that there are no gatherings. Now is the time to return to Him. Repent of what you have done and draw once more to Him. He awaits. Know that you are strong in Him. Also, some of us here who are listening might not have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior yet. Let me tell you this. He loves you, and He is all you need, especially in these trying times. Turn away from your sins and turn to God. Recognize your need of Him. Receive Him in your life as your Lord and Savior. He would gladly help you. If you need our assistance when it comes to this, please don't hesitate to to message us and we will direct you to somebody who could really help you. Our, one of our pastors or ministry heads would gladly help you out in receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior and helping you be discipled. So please don't be shy. And to the rest of us who are continuing their walk in Christ, keep shining your light. The world needs more good news than bad. Be a catalyst for change. Be a beacon of hope. In this world surrounded by despair, let the treasure in your frail vessel shine throughout the world. And I want to end in this passage. It is Paul's prayer, but it is a prayer that I would like all of us to receive today. In Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 to 19, he says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And that is my prayer for all of us today. When the going gets tough, You have Jesus in you. And know that when the going gets tough, you are also tough. Even when you have this human body with emotions, with weaknesses and pain and all of these things we wish were gone. But know that even though we are just made up of clay pots, clay jars, earthen vessels, whatever breakables, know that what makes us tough is what we have inside. And that is our treasure. No other than Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Join me in prayer today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word that you have delivered unto us today. We pray that you would let that hope be instilled in our hearts that indeed, even in these tough times, we know that there's going to be a bright tomorrow that you're preparing for us. We know that there is always hope in you. That no matter what the enemy throws at us, nothing could really take us down. Father, give us the strength to never give up. Give us the will to always trust in you, O oh Lord. Give us, Lord, the faith that we may be able, Lord, to always believe even though our tomorrow is as bleak as it can, uh, watching the news and social media, 
we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but when we read the Bible, we know exactly what's going to happen tomorrow, and that is you will prevail. And so, Lord, we put our trust in you. That indeed, Lord, when the going gets tough, we will only be tough because we have you inside of us. So, God, we choose to honor you today, to worship you today, to please you today. May you be honored in our praise, in our adoration for you, God. We thank you. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.